I know dear friend Thomas Manton IV, God's Prophet to the Nations and your success strategist. I have a title in my mind here uh, just now. So fresh, you know, when I come to you, I come with something I just heard. It's not canned stuff from uh, ancient of days. Time. It's just fresh off the, fresh out of the bakery. <laughs> fresh off the fire, fresh off the altar. Fresh from the divine bakery. And uh, I want to talk a little about uh, heaven's news, you know, God's news from the heavenly perspective. News behind the news, heaven news, uh, heaven's news on earth. First, look at all the signs that are going on. Look at all the signs uh, of the times that are happening right now. They've been one super moon after the other. And uh, welcome everyone that's coming on. Please do share this and uh, interact. Just write, you know, prayer requests, comments. Say hi. To, uh, write. Tell me where you're uh, writing from. So I know your location as well. That'd be nice. But, um, uh, a few months ago, I think it was in Jan the end of January, third week of January, something like that, was it February, I can't remember. Anyway, a few weeks back, the Lord had me uh, photograph the blood moon, the red moon, remember that? It was awesome. And then last night, it means something, and then last night, uh, the super moon appeared. Big, white, and bright, huge in the sky. You know, the little uh, phones, uh, cameras don't really do it justice, can't really get it. You need like a, a super, you know, super duper uh, telescopic kind of lens to take those pictures. So I like to take those pictures, you know, we find them in the news and all that. You want to do it live from the phone, even though you took it with your own hand, it just doesn't look, you know, like you see it in the natural. And, uh, Someone says, what do you think it means? I said, well, I say, if I have my way about it, it's a sign from God saying he's blessing his elect on the earth. Someone may think it means something else. Well, of course, it you know, might have something to do with Israel. We see Israel, great victory last night. President Donald Trump, some more news, uh, said that the Golden Heights that was disputed belongs to Israel. And of course, there'd be a lot of fervor and uproar about that. But thank God for the self-confidence, even the God touch of confidence upon uh, the mind and heart of Donald Trump, who a dear apostle, friend, uh, mentor of mine says he thinks he, that Donald Trump has more enemies than Jesus on earth because he's never seen anybody more lied about, lied upon, you know, twisted. Everything he does, people seem to hate and attack and haters and all that. It's, uh, it's amazing. Uh, and of course, it's more than... Because Jesus had the, the thousands of people around him in his day in Israel, and he was making the circuit there. And now you got it through the internet, through television, through media, to the millions of people in real time. So it makes it worse, doesn't it? But so what? You know, God is God is God, and He knows exactly what He's doing and what's needed in our day right now. So, um, then the president of Brazil just met with uh, the people affectionately call the Donald Trump of South America, the new president of Brazil that God had me prophesy. More news, God had me prophesy that Jair, Jair Bolsonaro would be elected the new president of Brazil, and he was. And they had their election on a Sunday. Well, that's a nice day to have it, isn't it? On the day. So, the Lord... Uh, He's on the move to revolutionize South America. Great move. And here comes Jair Bolsonaro in a news clip. It's on my Facebook page. You'll see it. Where uh, he's wearing a Jesus t-shirt. Jesus across the front. And he had a meeting with evangelical leaders, though I think he was, someone said he was maybe from a Catholic background. A lot of people are, but they get saved too, you know. It doesn't really matter what church you came you grew up in as long as you meet the Savior himself. That's good preaching right there, isn't it? So, uh, hmm, he uh, really, really did something meeting with evangelical leaders to tell him he wants to take Brazil on a new course, on a new journey uh, for greatness, you know? Great things, new great things to happen. I thought, well, that's what God said. Now, a few days back, um, I was in Brazil. More news, and many of you may not know this, but 
the Lord uh, walked into my hotel room on Friday afternoon at 3 o'clock on um, yeah, a few, a few short weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago, whatever it was. Well, today is Friday, so I guess it was three weeks ago now, yeah? And the Lord said to me, <clears throat> began to speak to me about what great things he's going to do for the nation of Brazil. Very, very powerful. Very, very, very heavy in upgrades, prosperity, economic growth, up, up, low, upgrades for the, the people, you know, of the country. And uh, all of that, just phenomenal, 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 phenomenal. So I am getting that ready for print. I've been very busy. I've been uh, traveling a lot. And I've been uh, I'm, uh, in a lot of meetings. But now I'm going to get this ready. It's going to be in Portuguese and in English. And it's going to go out viral across the nations and for the Brazilian people and people everywhere to read and to touch the people of Brazil. Powerful. And there's nothing the devil can do to stop it. It's on. It's a movement of heaven. You know, God uses me like that. Many of you, you know me for many years like that. Well, we, God's had me prophesy over Kenya is happening. Now they're building the tallest skyscraper in sub-Saharan Africa. It's a historic thing. It's in Kenya, in Upper Hill in the city of Nairobi. The fourth, uh, fourth Gong Avenue and Bishop's Road. Nice names, yeah. And uh, never been done before, but 19 years ago, in the year 2000, when the Lord first had me prophesy that the government would change in Kenya, and then two years later, about, well, less than two years later, when the Lord, in 2002, had me prophesy that uh, Mwai Kibaki would be elected as the president, and all kinds of new infrastructural development would take place, and development of the country, and blessing of the country in many, many ways, and it is not, when there was nothing there, there was nothing, there was no road, no good roads, there were no good buildings, I mean, just old stuff. Nothing, 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 nothing. No high-rise buildings, no elegant places to eat and all that. I mean, I remember we, when we went to the airport, there's a restaurant there called Simba Restaurant. You and Kenya will remember this, at the airport. And it was so horrible. The food, by the time it came, many light years after we ordered, was rubbish. It was like we didn't even eat, and I just went right to the plane and got out of there. So let me get some good food when I land in London, where I was going. And uh, very good restaurants there, of course. And I know some. Ask me, I'll tell you. Some good ones. In the west, uh, down in uh, the west side over there, near Harrods and all those places. Kensington and good neighborhoods. The Lord is, uh, you know, is, is, is upgrading nations and this Simba restaurant. I wrote on the, the receipt, you know, and I wrote a note like when I was giving it to the right, Simba restaurant, order today, eat tomorrow. <laughs> Some of you get that. If you order today, you may get your food tomorrow. People were missing their plan, almost going to miss their flights going to yell at them, why did we order so long ago, sitting there for an hour after the order, imagine you got nothing. The worst, ignorant, ridiculous, trashy service anywhere in the world, and these are people that are international travelers coming through there, what an embarrassment to an entire society. You know how many, thank God that no one can talk as plainly as I can, and I do it without, unreservedly without apology. The truth is the truth, reality is reality, and you need to take the heat and, and, and turn it up to change things. You know, I see people that are trying to be politically correct, religiously correct, societally correct, or whatever, tribally, socially correct, or all these things you want to say, and they just like, uh, want to say, well, it's okay, and you know, you shouldn't, you know, no, don't be critical. You know, someone said, in Kenya, people don't like the truth. Well, t we need to tell the truth, and I have done it for years, and things have changed the way we've declared, and the way we prophesied, Things have happened, you know, and it's just been uh, absolutely phenomenal what God has done in this servant of God that's talking to you right now. Whew. So Brazil is next on God's calendar. Anyway, the, the regime changed. Mwai Kibaki came in and was re-elected again. Took on the next five years, as God said. Uhuru Kenyatta then was elected and re-elected again, as God said. As I prophesied nationally, 
even over the media and over the airways, even put the document, type document, in President Kenyatta's hands, and he would be reelected. And the Deputy President William Ruto, God having put the documents in their hand before the election day. Met them at a big rally they were doing with thousands of people. The Lord had, had them walk right to where I was, sovereign. Nobody, you know, ran to make introductions and all that. They walked right up to me, stopped, had all these bodyguards running around crazy, didn't know why. They stopped just so that I could give it into their hands. By an act of God. I love that because God gets all the glory. You can't say, well, somebody, you know, put this together and then they want to take credit and all that. Although God does use people to arrange things, and that's fine. That's wonderful. But when God does it like that, sovereign, unbeknownst to all of us, that it would happen just like that. But I was prepared. I had the documents printed. I was ready to, you know, get them to them regardless. Put it, put it in their hand here. Read this. People were ecstatic. I heard the families and the relatives and the people that saw that and heard about it, they were beside themselves. And sure enough, the Lord had them win the election again. Even twice, the second time by 98% of the vote. Because the other candidate uh, was so mixed up in many ways, he couldn't, he had to pull out. And uh, big fiasco, they tried to steal the election, they tried to do it judicially. And, Everything they did failed. There was a petition in the first election that failed, and I said it would fail because God said that Uhuru was to be the president. Now, now you got to take the best of two candidates. You can't have another choice. You know, someone said, well, is, is Uhuru this or that? I don't know. I'm not from Kenya. I'm from America. I'm just a messenger. When you have a choice of one or the other, you have to choose between one of the two. What does God then say? Reality. Truth. We pray for every government that it gets straightened out, things get straightened out, things get better, not worse. And now the Lord had me prophesy more news. The Lord had me prophesy against corruption, that corruption will in the future become a thing of the past and the next generation should not grow up like the previous generation full of corruption. What the political people, anybody that stole or had high connections or whatever they when the heat comes down on them, to, to hit them back, you know, they go and pay everybody the money they stole anyway. And then all the cases disappear and everything disappears. And they just have people, what, we call, what, what was called impunity. But the Lord had me prophesy, even 12 years ago in 2007, that the, and this was a, 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 a far-fetched thing back then, to some still even now, because they, they've known the system their whole life corruption in the country. The Lord said, tell the people impunity will become um, temporary. Impunity will be also become a thing of the past. There'll be no more impunity. And you know, several people are going to get hit. They're, they're after it now. Now it's on full swing, this thing against corruption. In fact, the Lord divinely had uh, the, the President uh, Horo Kenyatta speak and say, he wants his legacy as the president that he helped him destroy corruption. Now, some people don't know what to make of that statement, but who cares what people think? You got to do what you got to do. I mean, make God happy. I say to the president and everybody else, make God happy. Make the devil be ashamed. Make evil people, you know, get put out of the way. Make the society be good. You know, the day should come when everybody feels safe there. If you have wealth, you can have it and enjoy your life. You don't have to be looking over your shoulder thinking who's scheming against you. And you don't have um, a a non-fulfillment of of good services for the society and the communities because the money always gets stolen. Like if it's uh, uh, allotted by the government, then it disappears and the roads never get done. Look at the roads even in the rich neighborhoods. You You can have a property that cost uh, a couple of million dollars even in certain neighborhoods outside the roads. The roads are like driving on the face of the moon, craters. You don't know if your car is going to be okay driving through there. And I don't know how the people take it except I figured it out. They all have these uh, these big land cruisers and all that with big rubber wheels so that they can take the bumps, you know, the off-road vehicles. And that's what they drive around in. And they kind of got used to it. And those cars are a little bit better. But if you have a little thin car, 
weak car, man. You're gonna wreck it. You're gonna, you're gonna be like eating a chiropractor by the time you drive somewhere. I have a dear friend who uh, is a, a spiritual divine partaker of, of blessings through the anointing upon this ministry here. The Lord had me prophesy over her and all that. She was telling me, and, and she's receiving tremendous blessings in her life. She's really following a you know, powerful thing. A connected person. You want to say spiritual daughter? I don't know. I don't like to use this term so much. Spiritual offspring. Yeah, kind of. By the anointing. Because the anointing touches so good. And the Lord, so that, that fits where it fits. Uh, and they, they said they, people used to carry painkillers in their bags when they were taking the matatus, which are the local buses, Nissan vans, to take people home because the roads were so bad. By the time you get off, you felt sick and you had to go lay down. I asked one woman how it was to go from Kasarani, which is just a little outside the city of Nairobi, from Nairobi town to, the, to there. How was it on the bus? And she says, pure hell. Another person, one of our ministry partners, pure hell. I said, well, hell isn't pure, but I understand what you're saying. Absolute hell. Imagine. Now the roads are being done. The Thika Superhighway was built. I, God had me prophesy the road development. Things have happened that have never happened. I want to tell Brazil, I want to say this, Brazil, get ready. It's about to happen. Um, a little news uh, uh, update here, short broadcast. The Lord is also saying that this year, 2019, and this year into the next year is going to be a tremendous season of wealth transfer to God's own people. Blessings of the Lord that make rich and add no sorrow. I mean tremendous blessing, tremendous miracles in the realm of finances. Are you ready for it? In Jesus' name. So when you look up and you see a beautiful scene, the northern lights now are also coming down through some geomagnetic storm that happened at other places in the world that nobody could see. The Northern Lights, except over like Finland or Norway, you know, up there, at the top of uh, the world up there on the top of Europe. Now they're saying even New York and Chicago will be able to see them, even uh, England will be able to see them. And, oh, England needs a touch from God. But let, it, let every nation, it's, it's, a, it's a phenomenon. It's, it means something. It means the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and has no sorrow is come. Yes, these things are going on with Israel. Yes, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Yes, these things are going on with end times, you know, the beginning, because so much evil is going on. The least of the world. Yes, 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 of course. Of course, we see that. We know that. We're aware. But I, I want to stay focused on the blessing of the Lord. I want to stay focused on the assignment He's given. And you got to be taken care of first before you can take care of everyone else. You know? You know, no, t no taking care of you, how can you take care of everyone else? How can everyone else get fixed if you're not fixed? If you're really in a mess in your life, you're not blessed, you're not together, you're not organized, how can you help the world become blessed and organized? You can't. So that's the focus, that's the focus, that's the focus. And these signs and wonders, <coughs> excuse me, are meaningful, meaningful for us that the Lord is near and he's coming on the scene to help us and bless us. Are you ready for it? So let every good nation that's possible to shift and turn for the better become a sheep nation and not remain as a goat nation. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey man, thanks for putting that on there. Eh? Please write me where you're, where you're, where you're, where you live at, where you're from. I'd like to see that and share this share this uh, with your friends corruption will come to an end it's being attacked it's going to take time but it's going to be worked on your blessing is being worked on behind the scenes god has wealth for you what he promised in his word and what he promised prophetically to us is coming to pass i'm not talking about so that we'll be okay we have enough to live and exist which we're doing fine but we need the wealth to to really build the kingdom around the world. You know what I mean? The big things, massive projects and teams of people and all the things they need to be sponsored and paid for and to help people and you know, come on.
employ a lot of people even so that they can work to build this order of the kingdom of God around the world. I prophesy right now, I want to say this, that many other countries are going to turn, some even in Europe, are going to turn to solidifying their positions as sheep nations. They're not going to be goat nations or wolf nations. Bad nations. They're going to be sheep nations. Sheep nations instead of goats. God wants sheep. Sheep, sheep, sheep. Look at Jair Bolsonaro putting on a Jesus t-shirt. Look at President Trump having Holy Ghost filled warriors, preachers coming all through the White House praying. Sheep. Sheep Nation America. Oh yeah, they want to make it a goat nation, the devils. They want to, you know why? And here's another thing, another news. Venezuela, you may not know this, but the Venezuelan Bolivar, B-O-L-I-V-A-R, Bolivar is the currency, is the cash, the paper money of, of the country. And they're saying now that it's absolutely worthless. I and mean, here's what it started to happen. I have a photograph, you see it on my Facebook feed. And, uh, Dear Mentor was telling me to start using Twitter. Oh, help me, Lord. I've been so in this Facebook too much. I, I need to... Uh, so the Lord wants to... Uh, us to go on all the media networks, and I need help with that. I really need help with that. I need a team. I need a team to handle the social media. I don't need usurious takers that say, pay me this and I'll do this, and they get no new likes, no new things. They haven't done a damn thing. I've seen it. I've seen it. I want to have a good mind to sue the guy. Anyway, another story. Taking money and doing nothing, that's just wrong. Why do they bring a curse upon themselves? Because that money is easily replaced. You know, I need real help. People that will volunteer. If we need equipment, we need other things to do it, hey, there's always uh, ability to take care of a few things like that. But we really need help with all that. So. Okay, on the Facebook page, you scroll down a bit, you see this picture. People threw their, and I have the photo somewhere, I've saved it. People threw the cash in the street, the boulevards, they threw it in the street. It's less worse than toilet, it's, it's worth less than toilet paper. Less worth than toilet paper, worth less than toilet paper than the tissues. Because those cost money to buy. They're packaged. You know. But the, the cash, can you imagine a country where the cash is worth this. It happened in Zimbabwe with that evil guy. He's finally out, but I hope the new one's better. The opposition leader, they attacked him and beat him so bad. I can't remember his name. He just died. He's gone. He was, I mean, you know, when people do that, did that to the guy, they really messed him up. He never, he never rose again after that. Be able to do anything. He was bruised and battered so badly. It's almost the equivalent of murder because he never finished his mission. Now he's dead. There's another president in there. I don't know what to say about that. If he's good or not. Cuba's another one. Supposed to turn after the Castro died. And their brother's there. But now I heard there's a new president. And it seems like we're wondering now whose side he's on. More people know, but I want to be a little bit diplomatic in the way I'm saying this here. Because I want to look into it a little bit more. I don't, you know what I mean? Not because I, I don't want to speak or it's real, but I want, to, I, want to, I want some more feedback on it. But somebody said to me, which is now hearsay, third party, that they don't think the guy is, you know, going to shift the country over the other way where it was. But I heard the Lord say that Havana will become a tourist center again, like it was back in the day, but even better. Cuba shouldn't be in bondage like that. Socialism doesn't work. Look at the USSR. God had it collapse in 1988, I believe it was. And Reagan came, came on the scene, and Ronald Reagan, the president of America, and began to talk tough with Russia. The Cold War ended, of course, and he began to try to dialogue and try to get something straightened out. But that, that whole socialism, communism thing, it can't work. Look at Stalin. Killed 20 million plus people. Even more. Look at Hitler, who's trying to create an authoritarian, you know, thing in, in, in Germany. 50 million people died in Europe because of one psychotic man who was able to get his demons into people to, to do that whole thing. And it's very, very delicate. 
world that we live in. You know, it can turn either way. But I want to prophesy right now. I hear the Lord saying that many other countries are going to become sheep nations. Some in South America, some in Europe, some in other parts of the world. I'm believing for it. Sheep, meaning the president of the country, will be a professing Christian in reality. They want Christian values, want conservative things, want correct things. Conservative is not a curse word. Conservatism is the enemy of liberalism, and liberalism is the enemy of conservatism. That's what people have made it, a political thing, but really it's satanic or godly. The liberal agendas are satanic. The conservative agendas, as we say, although it's kind of a funny word now, uh, people have tried to stain and disdain the word, are conservative values or godly values. Christian, biblical, you know, biblical, Christian, real, good for people. Liberal values are bad for people. Satanic. Thus, they're satanic. Are you loving this broadcast? I am different. I'm not teaching, I'm speaking prophetically. It's a newscast, heaven's news, prophetic news. Here we go. Love it. So, somebody said the Bolivars in Venezuela, which was a prosperous country, less than 15 years ago, maybe even 10 years ago, before they started this socialism nonsense, uh, was a prosperous country, very prosperous. Their, their val the value of their, their currency was very high, even par the dollar, almost. Or more than, even, like the euro, pound, the dollar, my lord. Now the currency is being piled up in the streets, and they said if you picked it all up with wheelbarrows, had a bunch of men Pick it up and take it. Put it in wheelbarrows, put it in the back of a truck, drive it there, pick the whole piles, boxes and boxes of it up, and bring it into a shop. They said, could you even buy a cup of coffee with it? That is just de de devastatingly demonic. Demonically devastating. Somebody needs to oust the guy. People need to uh, take the country back. Look at what's happening in Nigeria, another one. Let's jump over to Africa again, West Africa. These <coughs> Islamic people killing Christians, slaughtering them in whole villages. I preached in the area of Kaduna. Dear apostle friend and his wife and his family and all his church. Well, I was there. Wow, I'm getting fired up. It's hot. They go through there like that. So, so here's what I ask the question. Is the president in agreement with it? Is the governor there in agreement with it? Yes, because they're of that religion. Uh, evidently, or else they'd be sending out people to stop it. How do you let people slaughter innocent people? Because they're Christians, right? And you, and you think it's okay. It's not okay. And you and all the people that do that stuff are going to burn for eternity. Oh my, woe unto you. And I, I, I say people need to revolt. They need to they need to strike back. They need to not it, it cannot be tolerated. That cannot be tolerated. And if you see the photos, I mean they now I think the, the after this guy went and uh, killed all those people in uh, Christchurch, New Zealand, at that mosque, now now they're being very careful Facebook to look for, or well, you know, because they because that guy broadcasted live, so now they're probably looking for anything that looks like controversial and really getting you know tight on the photographs and all that. But people used to circulate them in the Facebook, and then it says uncover video because it's like uh, not so good to look at for some people. For anybody, really. You click open and you see people with their neck chopped or their head chopped or their body parts chopped, laying dead, dead in the street, shot, chopped up with machetes. Come on, man. Come on, people. Man, woman, men and women. What are you, how are you going to let that happen? I feel bad for the people. You have people that are good people, Christian people. They're praying, they're fasting, they're shouting, they're crying, they're crying out to God. They're going to do whatever they can, but they're outnumbered there. I mean, you know what I mean? It's not so easy for a few people to just rise up and change it. When you have political leaders in place, 
that are advocating all that, maybe even involved in it. What a dirty world we live in, what an evil world we live in. But we have the victory. So that's why I say, you know, hey, you can look at all these things and it's so disturbing, but we need to get blessed ourselves so we can do more. Plus, God does want you to, on a lighter note, God does want you to have a good life. So you all, my friends in Venezuela, I have some friends in Venezuela, some new pastors I've met from there, all my pastor friends and saints in Nigeria, all the people in England and the UK, I love you, praying for your country. We you want Britain to become great again. I feel like the title great is off, it because, off of it because, you know, what are they doing here? It seems like they're letting the country go to the dogs by immoral, drunken, weak uh, leadership. Not, you wouldn't even call that leadership. I don't know what you call it. Losership, because they're losing. Losing ground to very aggressive enemies. Very aggressive people that just want to take over. And they're, 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 they're at it, man. They're at it. They're doing it. While the Brits go to the pub at five after leaving the office and wind up home drunk, get up the next day, go to work, don't care, oblivious to all that's going on, just thinking it's okay. Then you have people in the House of uh, Lords and Commons and Parliament and all that, and they're just letting it all go on and nobody's coming against it very much. So sad. Demonic manipulation. Now you have people coming to America trying to get in political offices and all that. I have a lot of thoughts on that, but not much I can say here. But those things need to be sorted. People like that should not be in government offices. No. No. No, sir. No, ma'am. It shouldn't be. So, um, God is on the throne. Please know that. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. In my father's house are many mansions. And I go there to prepare even a place for you, one for you, two for you, three for you. Oh, glory to God. When I get there, I'm going to heaven. I want to be on Billionaire's Boulevard, with, uh, uh, with the Elders Boulevard, with Elijah, David, and Moses, and Abraham, and prophets and the apostles of old and I want to have time with them, have some cappuccino and ask them a lot of questions about how it goes. There is glory after this world, in this world right here. We need to have glory in the here and now. Are you ready for it? So God is, uh, he's on the move but he wants to raise an army wants to raise an army and you have a part in this thing. I'm praying for you to be blessed that your, your good voice, you that have a good voice, I don't mean to sing a song or preach a sermon, I mean righteousness is in you. You have an ability to cause influence to happen. You're an influencer, you're a leader I, of some sort, I, uh, whatever sort. I pray that God will amplify you. And one of, one of the ways that happens is through having money having wealth, having friends, having influence, having influence with the influencers, having influence with influencers. That's a prayer I'm praying. If God gives you influence with influencers, you're going to have influence to the people that they have influence over too. Have you thought of that? Favor is 95% the golden door, the diamond door, the open door to prosperity. Who you pleasure who you serve, who you solve problems for, who likes you, just causes prosperity to come to you. God likes us the most. He said everything I've said before. He said it, I saw this vision of a chessboard, and he sets us up on the chessboard, and he moves us around to get in the place where we'll be blessed. Haggai 2 says the silver and the gold is his. Psalm 24 says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof the world and all they that dwell therein. So everyone accounts to God. The Bible says also that every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. 
Jesus Christ is the Lord, to the glory of God the Father. He's the Lord of all the nations. He's the Lord of you and me. We need now to serve him with all our might, soul, and strength. But we need resources. We need help. We need to be blessed. I'm praying for you for that. And thank you, too, also for being my partner. As you sow into this anointing, God will, you know, give you harvests that are just crazy. As you receive the grace of this anointing, as some have, I have told testimonies, people have become multi-millionaires and are becoming multi-millionaires by the grace that's upon my life and ministry. Very powerful. Oh, I feel such compassion for the nation. I feel such a passion and trust for the nations. God wants us to pray and to walk. It's time to sow. It's time to serve. It's time to connect. It's time to partake. So our details will be on the screen, on the comment section there, where you can connect with us uh, tangibly. You receive the grace of this anointing. Everybody that writes, everybody, please again write where you where you're watching from and on thomasmanton.com you can sew and the other places you can sew are, will be on the screen so the lord is uh is really really moving right now look at these signs above as our redemption draws nigh nigher than it was before but the blessings that we need to have dominion in this world take dominion in this world and take dominion in this world they're really, really, really coming forth now in Jesus' name. I love you. More on this. I'm so excited. Thank you, Lord, for the victory in Jesus' name. I pray you be healed. I pray you be delivered from oppression and depression. I pray you be delivered from poverty and uh, being stuck financially. I pray that anything that's keeping obstacles in front of you for your business life, your wealth transfer coming to you, Things happening for you in your favor, your ministry, your business, your career, your, your upgrading, your promotions, your elevations. I pray that anything that's stopping that be broken in Jesus' name right now. The devil's power come off of you completely in Jesus' name. And the Holy Ghost fire from heaven. As I'm speaking news from heaven here, that the power of heaven, the power of the Holy Ghost come upon you and just light up your world with his glory. And you'll see the manifestations of so many new things, so many new blessings. It is the day and the hour for that, my friend. And I'm declaring this over you. And also the great words of the beloved prophet Isaiah that said, I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit and leads you in the way you should go. He's doing that. And the favor of heaven be all over your life. To you, through you, and for you. In Jesus' name. Thomas Matthew the fourth year, thank you for connecting with me and I will talk to you on the next broadcast. Love you, I pray for you. In Jesus' name. Make it a great, great day. Share this with everyone. People need to hear this. More later, I'll, I'll be continuing in this. The Lord bless you. In Jesus' name. Share this. Write to me. Also, if you have a specific prayer request for your business, your life, your family your physical situations, your financial situations, please private inbox me and put your phone number, and your cell phone number, and your email address in the correspondence, and I will correspond back with you. All right, I'm looking forward to hearing from you. And as I do, it's going to produce a new spark of glory in your life. Get ready for it. Get ready for it. It's coming. Smart of you to connect. And that is the word of the Lord. God bless you. Talk to you again soon. Thomas Manton for here. The website again is thomasmanton.com. We're also updating that. Many new things will be on there. Look for that. The Lord bless you. Talk to you on the next broadcast. Love you much. Amen.